Hi there, this is Grant, and welcome to the third and final part of the StoryMap.js tutorial. In the first part of the tutorial, I introduced you to StoryMap.js, and in part two, I walked through how to build a story map. Here in part three, I'm going to cover a few of the options for building a story map not covered in part two, and then focus on how to share your finished story map. Okay, let's jump right in. Here you see the five slide story map I built in part two to give you an idea of what kind of media and the combinations of media you can use on your slides to build the story map. As you're building your slides, you'll no doubt notice a Publish Changes button appear periodically. For example, if I make a change to the title here and click Save, a Publish Changes button appears. To explain this feature, first you should know that as you're working on your story map, there are two versions being saved. First, there's a draft version being saved when you click the Save button. But second, there's a published version. That's created when you click the Publish Changes button. Now, these two versions are being saved behind the scenes for you, but I can demonstrate this quickly. I've made that change here now. If I click over to the Share button, and we go into the Share link for this story map, and I'll go to the end of the link there, you can see that it reads draft.html. This is the draft version of your story map. And you'll notice that I'm being warned here that there are unpublished changes. If I click that Publish Changes button and now do the same thing and go to the end of that link, you see that it reads index.html. This is the name for your published version or master version or final version, whatever you want to call it. This is the version that you really want to share out to the public. I'll just close that out. Now, this isn't something you really have to worry about too much. Just remember that if you're happy with all the changes you've made to your story map, you should be clicking that Publish Changes button to commit those changes to a published version. A cool little feature you should know about is the Marker Options button down here. As you've seen, that by default, the markers on the map reflect the kind of media you've added. An image would have a certain icon and a YouTube video another. So this option lets you add your own marker images to the map, which you'll display instead of the default markers you see. So for example, I have found a, a temple icon on the web and saved it to my computer. So if I click on the Marker Options button, click on Choose a File, I'll click on the icon I found, open it up. Now, the dialog is telling me that I've already done this in the past. Do you want to overwrite it? Yes, I'll do that. And then click Close. You see that the marker has changed on the map. I have to do that on every slide individually, but it might help give your map locations a little bit more meaning if you supply your own markers. Now, in fact, the marker can be any of the images you've uploaded to the story map site while you're building a particular story map. So for example, if I go back to the marker options, if I click this little down arrow, I can see the other images I've uploaded to the site. Let's say I choose this one and click close. Now, it's pretty hard to see what that icon is an image of, but you should know that this is possible because it might spark some creative ideas for you. And by the way, if I want to change that back, I'll click on marker options again click the down arrow and click Default Icon, and then Close. And then we're back to where we started. Now let's take a look at a much more important set of options, all contained in the Options button here at the top left. These options affect how your story map will be displayed. So let's walk through them one by one. First, the story map size defines how large your story map will be if it's embedded on a web page or a WordPress post, for example. We'll look at how to do that in just a bit. You can also set the language of the buttons and the messages your viewers see in your story map. For example, if I change this from English to German, close this out and look at my story map in the preview mode, my navigational buttons have now changed to German. Next down, there are a number of font combinations for the heading and the text that people will see on your story map slides. You can play around with these combinations to give your story map the look and feel that you want. You can treat your story map either as cartography, that's a default, meaning as a map, or as an image. Now, the essential difference between these two is if you leave this on cartography, you'll see lines between the map markers on your slides. For example, if I advance from slide one to slide two, you'll see a line between the two map markers. However, if you choose image, those lines won't appear. The next option is the call to action button. It's selected by default and reads Start Exploring. Now that button appears on your title slide of your story map. In my case, I might want to change that to Start Exploring the Temples. 
I close that down, go back to my title slide, and look at the preview button, you'll see that the call to action button now reads, start exploring the temples. Finally, StoryMap.js comes with a number of map types. There's a fairly long list here, most of them being stamen maps, which give a more subdued and simple look to the map. And that might be something that suits the kind of map you're making. OpenStreetMaps display an accurate, far more detailed map. If you have an account on Mapbox, a separate mapping service where both free and paid accounts are available, you can add a link to maps with a number of styles provided by that service. The Gigapixel option here provides a link to a very large image, and the locations of your story map are locations on that image. You can review the story map homepage for more information on Gigapixel maps. The last choice here is using a custom map. This involves serving out a map with your own web server. This isn't something I've tried yet, but I'd be very interested to hear from anyone who has done this and what their experience might have been. Okay, I'm going to change this back to OpenStreetMaps. And the last thing on this dialog is the sharing tab. This essentially points you to the share settings for your story map. And if I click this button, it's exactly as if I were clicking the share button at the top right of the screen. Let's go through the options that it offers you. First, you'll always want to click the Publish Changes button here, just to make sure that you've incorporated all your changes to your story map. Now, first to mention, as you've probably noticed, StoryMap.js automatically creates a share link for you. You could use this link to provide a direct link to your story map on the StoryMap.js site. But you can also share your story map with these social media options, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, which really isn't a thing anymore, and Reddit. Let's look at the Facebook option just as an example. Notice you can provide a description, which I've already done, and supply a featured image if you're sharing to somewhere like Twitter or Facebook. I've already done those things. If I include those two things, this is what the post would look like on my Facebook page. If I didn't include a featured image, the post looks more like this, with an image of the Night Lab logo displayed instead. Now, all of these sharing options might be enough for you, but what if you want to display your story map directly on a web page or in a blog post? That means that people will stay on your website to view the story map instead of being taken to the StoryMap.js site. That's where the embed code you see at the bottom of the page comes in. Let's see how this works by using a blog post in WordPress as an example. But before we do that, let's have a look at how large the story map will display on that post. By default, the width is 100%. And you'll want to stick with this because it gives you the most real estate possible on that page. The height you might want to play with, depending on how much content you have on your story map slides. So let's go through the process of embedding the story map on a WordPress post. First, I'll select this embed code and I'll copy it. Then go over to my WordPress post. And if I'm using the Gutenberg editor, click on the plus sign here. And I need to put this in a custom HTML block. So I'll go search for that. Here it is and paste it into the block. I'll update the post and preview to see what that looks like. OK, here's my story map. You can see, though, that I have to scroll a little bit to see all of the content on this page and the Start Exploring button. So I might want to change the height of the story map. I'll edit the post. So back in the WordPress post here, I need to search for the height attribute change the 800 that was there by default, and I'm going to go big and make it 1100 instead. I'll publish it, and let's have a look at the post. OK, that's plenty large to display all of the text I have on my title slide and the Start Exploring button. Another remedy for this is possibly just to edit the amount of text I have on this title slide, which would help me shrink the size of the story map as a whole. That's a process you might need to go through if you embed your story map in a web page or somewhere like a WordPress post. All right then, I think that wraps up the third and final part of the StoryMap.js tutorial. Now you know how to share your story map via social media and how to embed the story map in a web page or a WordPress post. I really hope you enjoyed this three-part tutorial series. The next thing you can do is jump in yourself and play around with the story map editor, and probably better, create an actual story map of your own and share it so people can see it. That will really get you familiar with this very nice piece of software. Thanks for watching.